Stories from the Aether is written and performed by Ashley Wolf. Episode warnings can be found in the description. Sound among the trees, falls to tide. A human and an Avi Sala stepped into an inn. It sounded like the setup for a bad joke, but reality had always been one bad joke after another. The Avi Sala wore a thick brown cloak wrapped tightly around their body, and a cow pulled low over their face. The shadows helped to hide the odd, non-human features in towns where the chances of them being hunted were 50-50. Despite their best efforts, even the cloak couldn't fully hide their thin, gray-black beak or the dusty pink feathers running along their throat. It did even less for the spade-shaped tail, long-scaled legs, and feet too oddly shaped to fit into a shoe. It was, in part, why they'd been encouraged to stay in the court. They would be hunted. Not just because they were different, though that was an unfortunate reality, but they were more than an avisala. Yes, the average human would still call them a bird person and be more or less accurate. Dove had a beak, feathers, and long, three-toed feet that looked like they were made for wrapping around tree branches. They were also the key to the Umbra court. They were the directory for any and every written work. To most, the court was a library, a fantastical treasure trove of knowledge existing in its own small bubble of paradise. In reality, it was something of a collector. The roots of light bark painted in streaks of pastel rainbow reached into every little crevice they could find. The block between dimensions meant nothing to them. If they found a crack, they were in. They pulled written and drawn information no matter how little time it had spent on the planet. A child's drawing in the sand, existing for a fleeting moment before being washed away by the waters? The court would have recorded it, stored it away in its archive. A journal or letter burned in retribution. The court would have a word-for-word -word recreation link somewhere in the analogs of leather-bound books. To Dove, it had warped into a prison. They'd loved it at first. Their mentors showing them book after book, the court welcoming them in with open arms and troves of information. It had been a lot to take in. Any new experience always was, but within a week, Dove had mostly settled. The unbidden voices and constant flow of information took much longer to adjust to, but they got there eventually. Dove had always loved learning. They'd pick up any book they could get their hands on, and when a book didn't have the answer, they'd simply find out for themselves. Most would have considered them an adventurous child, but that implied a sense of uncertainty. A child wandering off in the wilderness, discovering a new world with a stick in hand to use as a rapier. Every single one of Dove's escapades, every so-called adventure, had started out with a simple question. What would it be like to build a small hut out of trees and sticks? What lived in the forest just outside their community? With a question in mind, Dove would search for an answer. Anyone who didn't know them was shocked when the swirling vortex of inky darkness painted with ever-changing hues of greens, golds, pinks, and blues opened the edge of the community. Even more shocked when a servitor slowly ducked through the portal. Ignan was the former keeper to the Umber Court, and everything had been going well until he was lost to them. That was when Dove truly felt the shift in the world. Maybe it was because Ignan had always been better with people. The old servitor could charm a king into handing over a kingdom if he wanted. Dove was not. Books and stories didn't judge you for not knowing how to talk or saying the wrong thing or butting in at the wrong time. Maybe the creeping loneliness that draped over the court like a blanket was their own fault. They'd never made an effort to talk to anyone visiting, so they shouldn't have been surprised when they were treated as nothing more than a directory. They shouldn't have been surprised when everyone grew angry if they left the court for more than a few minutes. After all, if they weren't present, no one would have access to the library. They were the key. So Dove sat day after day in the same chair in the farthest, darkest corner of the library. If someone wanted to know where they could find something, they'd have to find them first. No one bothered. Time and time again, Dove watched as people would step through the swirling portal, take one quick look around, and head back the way they came. Dove later learned it was because, as their sibling had put it, they want to make sure they still have access after the stunt you pulled a few years back. That stunt had been leaving the library for a few days after Ignan's passing. It felt like they would turn the corner and find their mentor looking up from the book with a playful smile and offering to make tea. 
Every time that wasn't the case, the room got a little bit colder. Of course Dove had wanted to leave. Why would anyone want to be somewhere that only filled open wounds with salt? Dove knew better. They knew better than to leave the court. Bad things happened when they came back. Visitors were even less likely to interact with them. People made sure they knew exactly how inconvenient it had been for them to not have access to the court. No one bothered to see Dove. Even their siblings would quickly shut down any conversation they tried to start. They had become a part of the court. The deep purple leaves with twinkling bits of silver had claimed them. They were the court. They were the single key that allowed passage into it, but few people ever truly took care of their keys. They were the things that got left behind, tossed on the counter and only found again in a mad dash before heading out the door. They only became important when one was met with a lock. They'd let their resentment grow. Any attempt to explain or discuss their feelings was met with, You were chosen by the Umber Court. This is what you were destined to do. You wouldn't want to go against your destiny, would you? Or something along those lines. No one understood what it was like to be present but not seen. To be spoken to like you weren't real but an extension of an unfeeling base of knowledge. Like you didn't live and weren't allowed to. They knew better, but they couldn't stop the anger that festered. Any attempt to make someone understand was met with a scoff at best. At worst, it was the malice from their family. They were supposed to be the good one. They were the oldest, the example. They were the one to hold high on a pillar and claim because they'd gone from living in a small community of maybe 50 to someone recognized around the world. They were getting invited to balls and grand events left and right simply because of their connection to the court. A connection that was slowly distancing them from everything they'd ever held dear. No longer could they step into the world. No longer could they laugh and talk with friends. They didn't have friends anymore. The court had taken those away too. Even if it hadn't, the court was always buzzing away in the back of their mind. Peace didn't exist. Until Jason, Dove hadn't found anyone who'd offered to understand. Jason was an anomaly. The shaggy-haired man had rushed through one of the gates of the Umber Core looking completely disheveled, Dove had been hanging clothes out to dry when the man practically fell at his feet. The wet cloak flapping in the wind was the only sound as the two of them stared at each other. Dove helped the man up, and that's all it took for the three-year relationship to start. It had started out so small. Jason let Dove talk, something no one had ever done up until that point. He was kind, and while he didn't understand what it was like to have the court constantly screaming in his head, he'd never gotten upset when Dove became distracted. Then it morphed into holding Dove when no one else bothered to offer comfort. On the days when things got hard, when being treated as nothing more than a directory became too much to bear, Jason was there. He would run his fingers through Dove's feathers until they'd calmed down enough to feel like themselves again. There were nights where Dove fell asleep pressed against Jason's side and woke feeling far better than they had since being thrown into this life. It should have come as no surprise that after a particularly bad day, when Jason suggested they leave, Dove could no longer think up a good reason to stay. It was only a matter of time before the two of them left the library that had gone from a welcoming home to a prison. Dove didn't look back when the glowing portal of the gate closed behind them. It sealed the world off from the library, but if they couldn't even treat the caretaker of the court with respect, they didn't deserve the knowledge. Let them suffer. They'd spent more than half their life trying to make it easier on others just to be thrown to the side. They were finding it hard to dig up any sense of empathy. Fuck them was the only thought that came to mind as ice hardened around the Avi Sala's heart. Dove was a follower. They always had been. They didn't like creating waves in new situations. They didn't like being the center of attention, preferring to fade into the background. While it was difficult, being a seven-foot-tall bird person, they were remarkably skilled. They let Jason take the lead as they traveled, more than happy to stay silent as they took in the world they'd been separated from for so long. Nothing made sense anymore. Small towns that had once barely been on a map were now sprawling cities, while cities had withered away into nothing. To Jason, it was like stepping into a pair of old shoes that hadn't been worn in a while. For Dove, it was like breaking in a new pair entirely. They felt far too out of place, but each time their mind wandered back to the library, fire's rage licked at their heart. They wouldn't go back. They wouldn't go back to the cold, uncaring books and the claiming magic no one understood. They refused to lay in the embrace of an uncaring god any longer. If people curse them for it, so be it. 
The Umber Court was a part of them, but it didn't make up their entire personality, no matter what people chose to believe. Jason smiled up at him, twirling the key for their room around his finger. We'll be meeting up with my friends tomorrow. Jason snagged a bottle from the table as he spoke. Dove nodded, too exhausted to properly speak. The past few days they've been growing exhausted. Who knows how many years spent doing nothing but reading and sitting and waiting had done a number on their stamina. It was a frustrating fact of life, but traveling with a group would make things easier. There would be more hands for setting up camp and making sure they didn't run into someone more than happy to take Dove's head from their neck. They'd never left their community before moving to the Umber Court because of how dangerous the world was. Abisala had evolved to run quickly in order to escape those who would hunt them. Humans had evolved to be endurance hunters to run creatures like Abisala into the ground. While few humans would attack unprovoked, there were enough to keep most non-human creatures wary. To make the target on their back bigger, Dove now had a collection of every ounce of knowledge ever written or etched into the margins of a book, chomping at the bit to enter their mind. The court had been mercifully silent since they left, but they could still feel it there. All they had to do was lower the walls they'd built between themselves and the court. It would be so simple to invite it back in. Allow the court to bring with it every memory of wandering halls lined with books, hearing Aikman's hooves rustling the carpet of leaves and moss as he walked, the feeling of having their feathers ruffled as though their mentor was more a proud father than a teacher. It would be far too easy for the walls to crumble, so Dove reinforced them. They hadn't realized they were getting lost in their thoughts until Jason's figure brushed against their arm. Come on, it's been a long day. He offered the Avisala a drink. Dove leaned into the soft touch, placing their head on Jason's shoulder before partaking in their nightly ritual. A meal over a blanket spread on the floor. It was something Jason had suggested when they first started dating. He'd phrased it as wanting to try something silly, but Dove had never felt more loved. These past few days on the road, it had been the one thing that helped them fall asleep a little faster and feel just the slightest bit safer. Morning came far too quickly for Dove's liking. They didn't even remember falling asleep, yet Jason was gently prodding at their arm. It took all of their energy to right themselves. Even when they did, the world refused to still, the edges between dream and reality fuzzy and blurred. Rubbing their eyes, they stumbled out of bed, somehow managing to pull their shirt over their head, though it did get stuck on their beak for a moment. They could already feel the dread creeping into their bones. Today was not shaping up to be a good day. Dove was just grateful for the steaming cup of coffee Jason pressed into their hands. Jason couldn't stand the stuff, but he'd learned to make it because they enjoyed it. While it didn't completely clear the cotton filling their mind, it helped. The rest would clear as the day went on. Something felt off the moment they stepped out of the inn. Dove couldn't place their finger on it, but it had their feathers standing on end. Every rustling of the leaves and crack of a branch had them jumping out of their skin. Jason didn't seem bothered, but humans weren't always adept at reading situations in the wilderness. Ignan had always called them too far removed from the nature of things. While there were hundreds of stories in the court that proved him wrong, there were another 10,000 that proved him right. Humans had a habit of trying to threaten the world into submission rather than change their habits to thrive in the world. It wasn't until Duff stumbled, their legs wobbling like a newborn lamb, that the realization of what was wrong finally hit them. They clung to Jason as the world spun, greens and browns becoming a kaleidoscope of color that refused to still. Their hands dug into the long sleeves of the human shirt as their boyfriend lowered them to the ground. Finally, Jason muttered, looking to the trees. I was beginning to think someone gave me a shit batch. Dove could hear movement from all sides of them, twigs snapping, leaves being pushed aside, boots scuffing over exposed roots, voices overlapping to become a ringing in their ears. They tried to raise their head to push themselves to their feet, anything to get a look at who might be approaching. Nothing moved. Their fingers barely twitched. Wide, terrified eyes glanced to Jason, but the man wasn't looking at them. He was focused on the group at their back. The figure blurred around the edges, but he didn't seem concerned. If anything, he seemed relaxed, maybe even friendly. Shit, Batch! A voice Dove didn't recognize scoffed. I told you it would take five days. It has to build up in the system before you really see the effects. The words flowed over Dove like water before pulling back and slamming into them like a tsunami. This had been planned. Jason had been planning this. They needed to move. They needed to run. 
They could feel their heart beating rapidly in their chest, trying to convince the rest of their body to move just as quickly. It was a fruitless endeavor. Jason took a step back to look at the Avisala before him. Normally, they were considered dangerous creatures to be on the wrong side of. Their talents could make shreds of a man in seconds. But they were, as a whole, rather peaceful, more likely to run than engage, which was exactly what they'd needed to prevent. Dove wasn't someone they could just allow to run around. The monster held all the knowledge of the world. With the knowledge of the court on their side, they could take their plan to the next level. It would have been foolish to think the Keeper to the Umber Court would help them of their own free will. But Jason wasn't one to back down from a challenge. That's why he'd been chosen, after all. It had been so easy. Get the Keeper out of the court, bring it somewhere it could be kept, and interrogated. It was probably the simplest mission Jason had ever done, and yet the one with the most pressure riding on it. All the information of the court was lying at his feet. But he was so getting a promotion for this. Please. The creature at his feet managed to slur. This couldn't be happening right now. Jason had been by his side for three years. Not once had Dove detected a hint of malice in that smile. They had to believe the man stepping away from them was... misguided, lost, uncertain. Not this. Not someone who would look at their partner the way he was now. Please, I know you. Condescending laughter interrupted them, chilling their blood to ice. The cold shards cut through their veins. It took a great effort for Jason to get the laughter under control so he could speak. Were you going to say love you? There was another bout of wheezing laughter. Did you actually believe that? They were standing beneath tall trees painted with pastel streaks. Wind whispered through the purple and silver leaves above. Barely visible stars twinkled in the never-ending sky. It was perfect. The air just chill enough to remind them that beyond the trees an eternal night would be their only greeting. But here, in the safety of the Umber Court, the vastness of the universe was softened. Kept on display in leather-bound covers neatly organized below mellow, bobbing orbs of light, Jason let out a small, content sigh as he took their hand. He laced their fingers together, the same fingers that had brushed against spines of a thousand books in awe, once they had cupped a floating orb as though it were fragile. He pulled Duff forward, causing the unsuspecting Avi Solid to stumble. Before they had the chance to write themselves, a soft kiss was planted on their cheek. I love you. Dove almost missed the words. They were quiet, barely audible over the light breeze. They'd just finished talking about the intricacies of nature. Their hands waved wildly in the air as they discussed the importance of predators in ecosystems. Why they were important to have around, why killing them outright was proven not to work. Ways to keep predators away from livestock without needing to resort to drastic measures. They weren't sure how long they'd been talking when they realized they were getting too loud. People didn't come to the Umber Court to see Dove. They just needed to have Sala there to ensure they had the access. When they stepped through the gate, they wanted to be directed to their books and left alone. That part, Dove didn't mind so much. They could understand not wanting to be bothered when a good book had just been opened. Except, people never saw Dove. They were just a part of the library, a thing that was needed to have access, but not someone to be interacted with. They were a directory, something to be glanced over and then widely forgotten. Only reason anyone would care if they disappeared would be because the library would become inaccessible, not because anyone truly cared. No one ever realized their keys were missing until the moment they were standing before a locked door. This was no different. Dove had been about to apologize. That's what most people wanted from them when they became too much. Though that thought was cut short when they saw the expression Jason was wearing. They'd never seen it on a person. Read about people looking at someone they cared for, eyes brimming with kindness. Sure. To see it directed at them, rather than the power they held? Dove never dared dream it might be possible. I love you. The words were breathy, whispered in awe moments before he pressed a kiss to each of their knuckles. They were lying in Dove's bed, dim red lights dancing in the corner of the room, cascading like a sunrise over Jason's pale body. Blankets tangled around their ankles, cocooning them. He was laying across their chests like the world's best weighted blanket. The warmth emanating from him threatened to put Dove to sleep. They ruffled his hair with their beak, the slightly curved bone leaving streaks in its wake. Jason humped, nuzzling further into Dove's neck. I love you. The words mumbled sleepily against their skin. They could feel the warm breath dancing through their feathers as sleep claimed the human. They ran their claws through his hair. 
gently massaging the scalp until sleep came for them as well. One late afternoon, Dove woke to soft kisses peppered along their neck. With a grumble, they rolled over to pull Jason into their arms, holding the human close to keep him from catching them unaware again. The trapped human giggled, a sound far more musical than the laughter emanating from him now. His arms had flailed, but the hiccuping laughter made it difficult for him to truly escape. His voice twinkled off the streaked bark of the umber court, and the small orbs of light flickered playfully in return. They glittered like lightning bugs, excited and joyful in their movements. For a fleeting moment, Dove wondered what it would be like to watch a child of their own play in the woods. Small fits of laughter and gasps of wonder filling the air as chubby hands reached for the flickering bugs, only to have them flit away at the last second. Dove was pulled back to reality when Jason pushed himself to his knees, sitting firmly on the Avisala's chest. There was no escape for them, not that they would have wanted to at that time. He put a hand on either side of their face, placing a gentle kiss to the top of their beak. I love you. Did you actually believe that? The words rattled around in Dove's head. The laughter, the brash, teasing tone behind them. The way they poked and prodded, digging under their skin. They had. They had believed it with every fiber of their being. And now it was too late. They couldn't fight back. Couldn't even keep their eyes open. Their eyes were dry, itchy, like they were turning to stone despite how they watered. They could feel the water gathering on their long lashes as their eyes refused to open. Jason took a step back, admiring his handiwork as the rest of the Dureks closed in around the monster. Secure that thing well, he nearly growled, and get the Minotaur. I'm not risking anyone getting hurt if that thing wakes up too soon. The last thing Dove heard before the darkness finally claimed them were twigs snapping under heavy footsteps.